Hey everyone, if you want to build a business that is very profitable and runs without you, so you can go traveling doing the things you love, you're going to want to watch this week's Wisdom Wednesday. So for many years I worked with a lot of Australia's sort of leading franchise organizations training their top franchise owners. Now these franchise owners were good at what they did. They were the most successful business people that had purchased these franchises. And they were typically going to build two to three more of their franchises. And so to do that, of course, they would bring me in and I would work with the business owner very, very closely around their patterns. You'll see why in a second. But we would also build all the systems out in their business and we would help them um, employ a dream team of high performers. Now the truth is most business owners know very little about human behavior. And if you are wanting to recruit a, a, a dream team and a dream team are high performers and you need to know a lot about human behavior, how people tick. Because to bring on a dream team, and by the way, you, you can never build a business that runs without your constant input without a dream team. Probably only about 10 to 15 percent of the population fit into that category of, of um, uh, belonging to a dream team. And one of their biggest value systems is conscientiousness. So they have high levels of conscientiousness. They uh, feel ashamed when they make mistakes and their own intrinsic sense of self-worth comes from doing their job properly, meaning as I said before, being very conscientious. And they have really high standards. Now, typically, when they were younger, these people were wanting to do really well at school, wanting to impress the teachers. And then when they first started their job, their first jobs, they, they, they wanted to do well. They wanted their bosses to like them. So they, this kind of person fits into, as I said, 10 15% of the population. So, again, when I'm working with these franchise owners to get them to build themselves out of the business... As I said, we're putting in the systems and then we're helping them employ high performers to their team and only high performers because, as I said earlier, you can't leave your business and trust your staff unless they are high performers. Your, the, we'd build out their leadership teams with high performers and depending on the number of businesses that they had, whether it was one, two or three, we would have to really, really pick good leaders Again, the aim in doing this was to extrapolate the business owner from the business so the businesses would run without them so they could go on holiday and have a, a, a fun life. Um, so in, in those ways, they're building resources that produce income without them having to be there. So again, when we come back to that dream team, those people, when you know how to choose them, attract them and pick them, high levels of conscientiousness, they actually have the same values as a business owner pretty much. That means that when they make mistakes or when they, they don't reach their highest standards, they give themselves a hard time so you don't have to. And that's the kind of person you must employ if you want to build a business that you don't have to operate or don't have to be working as a business owner. Uh, if you're interested in finding out how to attract recruit, um, attract and recruit a dream team, let me know below in the comments. It's something that we take our serious clients through um, when we're helping them business building. Anyway, this is not the nature of what I want to talk about. <laughs> I talked about working with the franchise owners, putting the systems in, putting a dream team in, and then we can start to extrapolate the business owner from the business. Now, I've got a, a story to share today because, you know, as I constantly say, you can have the best technical or strategic advice possible, but if you're not dealing with your patterns, you'll undermine it. And, and again, most business coaches and, and, and consultants have no idea about patterns, about human patterns and how they operate. So this is why they don't get the success that they could. If they knew their clients' behavioural patterns, 
especially their unconscious ones, they'd see sooner how that person was going to undermine uh, setting up a business so that the business owner could get out of it. So anyway, in essence, the story. Uh, this would be about 12 years ago, and I would have been doing a lot of training for Weller and worldwide sell and marketing at that point. And anyway, a superstar hairstylist in Perth who had a very elite and famous salon approached me and said, Perry, can you help me uh, get out of the business so it runs without me? And I spent mm, probably about six weeks there, again, building out their systems, building out the systems manual. Uh, he had good staff, but I helped employ a, a leadership team. Now, this was a high-end salon. It was pumping. He's famous. He's a guy that used to do all the stars here and uh, all the models here. And so it's probably really important that I share a little bit more about him. So he's a very flamboyant person. He has what we call a star profile. He attracts people to him. Um, a, a real networker. A, a really nice guy, actually, but he, very egoic as well, as a lot of very successful people are. He, he really thought he was incredible. Uh, when he worked with clients, he really, really... Uh, <laughs> sort of used his charm and helped all the, the women feel beautiful when he was doing their hair. And he, like, he was just a star of the salon. And there was about five other stylists, if I remember right. If, um, but they were sort of, you know, kind of seen as second fiddle to him. He'd, he'd really built this business around his particular profile. Anyway, so once we did all the strategic and fundamental stuff to build him out of the business... And I suspected this would happen because of his personality profile. Uh, his leadership team started to call me and going, he keeps coming into the business. He keeps coming into the business. So instead of enjoying the profits of a business that ran separately from him, he kept coming in. And he'd keep finding fault. Now, this is what was happening on a patterning level. This uh, business owner, this stylist, had spent his entire life, as I said, being a star. And if you're a star, you really get to enjoy people's adulation. You get, so you get a lot of ego validation. And he wasn't just egoic, he also loved interacting and connecting with people. So, you know, as he was a superstar doing everyone's hair and being famous for that, and um, <laughs> he enjoyed that, he enjoyed that connection. But once we'd built him out of the business, He's sitting at home and all of a sudden he's experiencing a depression, a sense of low self-worth because for the first time in his life, now that he's got this business running separately from him, he's not getting that hit of connection. He's not getting the validation for being the star. And so that emotional neediness kept bringing him back into the business, undermining what he'd asked me to to do, which was to build him out of the business so he could have a far better lifestyle. And he wasn't very clear about this because this was unconscious. He didn't see it. So I actually had to sit him down and we had to work through his patterns. And I had to show him how to find ways of getting that connection and for still keeping his star profile in place and finding ways to get that hit, um, the dopamine hit through being liked, through being a star. Um, because we had to stick to the strategy of keeping him out of the business so he could have the lifestyle he wanted. Now, again, you can start to see from this that if, if, if patterns aren't addressed, the person's behavioral patterns aren't addressed, they will undermine what you're trying to do for them strategically. This is why when we are training our entrepreneurs in our highest level programs, we're really working not only with the strategic and technical, but we have to, first of all, identify what's happening on an unconscious level that will stop them from building themselves out of the business um, and where it is in their thinking that they're sort of blocked where that they don't understand what is required to build themselves out of the business. So there goes the tip today. Um, again, your patterns matter when you're trying to build yourself out of a business. Enjoy. See you next time.